And so he sent me a personal letter and it's got his signature on it. It says, I hear you're considering Cornell. Would you, I'd be happy to host you if you want to uh, get more information about your decision. You can come by. I took it to my mother. Is this like the Carl Sagan? <laughs> we made arrangements to go visit him up in Cornell. We, we toured the offices, the labs, and I was in his office, and I'll, I'll never forget. He's facing me, but reached his arm behind him and pulls a book off the shelf, and it's one of his books. And I thought, that's badass. If you <laughs> if you don't even have to look at, at whatever book you hand hits. And he signed it to Neil, future astronomer. So, and, but that's not even what's impressive. It's that at the end of the day, he takes me back to the bus station because Ithaca, New York is a bus ride from New York City. And uh, it begins to snow. He writes down his home phone number and says, if the bus can't get through, call me. You can spend the night with my family and leave tomorrow. So I realized, and I amazed, I said, I am no one to him other than an up and coming aspiring scientist. And I committed myself to the fact that if I was ever as remotely famous as Carl Sagan, that I would treat the next generation of students the way he had treated me. And every time a student walks by my office door, I have big plate windows uh, in my office. If I'm on the phone, I say, Barack, I, I got to go. There's a student who I have to talk to. <laughs> it's only a slight exaggeration. <laughs> 